going off-roading today. It's a little bit overgrown. It's been uh, raining, kind of. I haven't been here in a while. Holy crap. Uh, we're back here, back in the woods, see if we run into someone or not. I got headphones on so I could pretend like uh, talking to someone on the phone, you know. Back in the woods. But yeah, a little bit afternoon. It's nice and cloudy, actually. And you know what? It's kind of chilly. Kind of chilly. Um, like, right now, I would imagine it's less than 70 degrees. And I'm someone, like... I'm someone who gets kind of cold, uh, so when the temperature is basically like, if it's below 80 degrees, I'm probably wearing pants, um, and if we're in the 70s and it's a guaranteed I'm wearing a hoodie, uh, I mean, that's, that's what you get when you're uh, underweight. I used to be severely underweight, but uh, not anymore. It was a weird, uh, a weird thing where... I used to be slightly overweight, uh, and then I dropped like 50 pounds, and then I became underweight. And then for a brief period of time, I had an eating disorder, and then after that, uh, I've, I've just been mostly stagnated, but uh, I haven't really gained too much weight after that. Uh, but that, I guess that's a story for a different day. That's not really what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about... Holy crap, dude, it's really overgrown. It's like that scene in uh, Spirited Away. Holy crap. Um, I mean, I'm not a super outdoorsy person, so there can most definitely be, like, poison ivy or something around here, and I won't even know. Uh, I'm going to assume that there isn't. I know there's a rule for that that you can check. Um, but... I, I don't know. I have pants on, so it's fine for me. I just I just aim the 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 camera at my crotch, right? Just in that general direction. Uh, there's there's some people over there, so I'm gonna kind of hang out over here, maybe. Actually, uh, okay. I, I'm just gonna hang out in this general area, I guess, because I think there's something going on over there. But um, something I've been thinking about lately. Uh, Windows 11, right? Okay, so Windows 11, Windows in general is a fucking nightmare, right? Uh, I've been someone who's been using Linux for the longest time. Interesting story. Uh, so when I first started using Linux, it was because in like 2014-ish, when I was like a freshman in high school, um, I had I had this uh, this HP laptop, which I still have. Uh, and I, I, I've been using it basically every day ever since. And actually, I think there's an otter over there or something. Some little guy swimming over there. No, actually, not an otter, a beaver. Why? I don't think there'd be an otter around here, but it's a beaver. That's cool. Um, but, so I started, I had this, like, laptop that I used primarily for gaming, even though it wasn't gaming uh, capable at all. It was one of those, uh, AMD APU computers that was kind of capable, uh, but at the same time, like, severely underpowered for what I was trying to do. Uh, APU being, like, AMD's um, combination of a GPU and CPU. So it was, like, this weird little thing. It's basically just good uh, integrated graphics and good being very subjective. Uh, I mean, it could run Minecraft, and that was the main game I was into. Like, it was playable. But then other games I wanted to get into, like Elder Scrolls. I was playing Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Um, and it managed that decently, but then once you started to put... Even a couple mods in there it would just fucking die. Uh, but I, I played a lot of like Team Fortress 2 in Minecraft mainly. Uh, nothing else. Uh, and uh, that was the computer I had for the longest time. But then uh, the hard drive decided to shit itself uh, less than a year in. Actually, I think it was in 2015 I started using Linux. Uh, my mistake. Uh, it was like during the summer. May Actually, dude, I don't know. I, th I, f I swear it was during... My freshman year of high school, actually. But basically, uh, so like 2014. And that's going to age me, if you want to calculate that. But uh, let's see. Anyways, back on track. Uh, so uh, my, my laptop hard drive failed. And uh, it was one of those really crappy uh, Chinese Hitachi drives. Uh, expectedly, it failed. Um, I, I, think, I don't think it was even 500 RPM. 
it might have been, but it was a really shitty drive, uh, and it just decided to shit itself one day. Uh, and at the time, I was like, I was like a 14 or 15. I didn't really know too much about computers. I was barely getting into the whole uh, PC gaming thing, so I wasn't all that familiar with some of those things. So um, I just assumed that my computer decided to shit itself, and um, I, I, re I had, I still had the the Windows 8. That was back with Windows 8. Um, Windows 8 uh, recovery disk or whatever that came with the computer because I bought it at a, like a Best Buy or something. Um, so I still had that re reinstalled Windows. Uh, when I got a new hard drive, I bought a, a Western Digital one, a Western Digital Blue. Uh, installed the hard drive, reinstalled Windows, booted it back up, and I'm like, shit, I have to rebuy Windows. Um, and this is something I learned much later on is that the Windows activation key is tied to your motherboard. So as long as you don't upgrade your motherboard or CPU or something, I, I think um, the Windows activation key will still work for uh, your your device. So I could have just reinstalled Windows uh, and just looked under the bottom of the computer and looked at the serial number that came, like the Windows sticker, and just typed in the, the code. Uh, but I was an idiot at the time, and I didn't know that. And I was like 15. I, was, I didn't have $100 laying around for a new copy of Windows. Uh, so I'm like, fuck it. I am not paying $100 for this bullshit. Uh, so, there's a plane passing. I don't know if it's picking up my voice. Uh, that could, but... Um, I was like, fuck it. Gonna find an alternative. Um, so for a while, I used Windows Unactivated. But then uh, I eventually stumbled upon Ubuntu. Uh, because I was uh, a Firefox user. I, I, even back then, I ditched Chrome. Chrome was mainly... It wasn't a privacy thing. It, I mean, it kind of was privacy. Um, but at the time, like, Chrome has always been a bit of a memory hog. And if you're using a laptop, um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a pain in the ass to deal with. Uh, but, like, I guess under any circumstances, you should not be using Google Chrome. But even back then, I was using Firefox. And I think through Firefox is where I stumbled upon Ubuntu. And with this... Uh, Linux thing actually was. So I started using Linux. Um, uh, downloaded Ubuntu. This is back, I think it was Ubuntu 14. It might have been 16. Um, I, I want to say four, I, I want to say it was 14, but I have a strong feeling it was a 16 already. 16.04 16 um, uh, with, with the, and I downloaded like with the shitty Unity um, desktop environment and everything. Uh, so I, I just got, I started using Linux and like it just worked. It worked really good. Um, like I noticed a bit of a performance boost in my computer, but it wasn't like a, a like a huge deal uh, because it wasn't, uh, I mean, Windows 8 wasn't terrible uh, in terms of like bloat and shit, but it was still kind of bad. Uh, but I, I started using Ubuntu and that's where my journey with Linux started. Uh, and that was the computer I used basically every day for uh, like doing schoolwork and whatnot in high school. Uh, mainly what I would do is uh, I would listen to a lot of music on Spotify and then just do school work to see unlike Firefox or whatever. Um, that's the thing. Like these days, most like the average user doesn't need to use Windows because most people, the, the extent of their computing uh, like time is spent within a web browser. Uh, you, you don't really need anything else. And a lot of the other major programs either have a good alternative or are just straight up on the... Uh, on the um, the fucking pl uh, operating system, so like I started using uh, Linux and uh, with Ubuntu, and I didn't really have any problems with it. Uh, and it was it's like beginner friendly because I didn't have any issues with it. Uh, eventually, you know, I would run into issues or I'd be dumb and I'd break something. But that's when uh, you just got to go in, uh, you know, go into your preferred search engine. Like you, you could honestly use Google, use DuckDuckGo, whatever you want search up what you need, search up the issue, and there's going to be someone who's had that issue before and you'll find a solution to it. Otherwise, uh, sometimes you might stumble upon a Stack Overflow uh, or like some old forum post from like 2010 or something that's been unresolved and then you're kind of out of luck. Then you got to find a workaround, you just got to work through it. That's one of the good things that it will teach you how to troubleshoot your shit. Uh, and that made me way more capable of a computer user. It, from like a noob to a power user really quickly and I, it sounds terrifying but uh, it's really easy it's not that hard so I, I used Ubuntu for a long time 
um, with with that. Uh, like m the biggest concern was gaming back then. Uh, the Steam support wasn't that great, all things considered. But it was still there. It still worked. Like the games I played mainly, like Minecraft and Team Fortress Two, worked on that computer. A lot of the other uh, really uh, more complicated, more graphically intense games that I had it just straight up wouldn't work on that computer regardless. So that wasn't a problem. I had another desktop for gaming, so I just used uh, Linux on my laptop, and it was uh, it was easy. It, it just worked. Uh, and then over the course of a couple of years, I started to get more invested in the whole Linux thing. Um, I started distro hopping for a while. I think everybody goes through that phase. Uh, I tried a lot of things. And that's when I, around the time I started browsing G. Uh, so I was using Linux before I was a G user. And like even before I was on 4chan. Uh, and uh, once you go on G, and then you start to see like all these threads. And um, like a lot, of the, a lot of the times what people say, they're just like joking around and shit. But a lot of times uh, there's some like, there, there's some truth behind the the irony um so like a lot of things are said tongue in tongue in cheek but sometimes like there is some genuine uh i guess um advice that can be given that uh like or, or at least you're exposed to more things and like what other people are doing and even if there's like meme solutions and like in meme operating systems and whatever you can still try them and like the only way you're going to know if it's good or not is if you try it and then you start to figure things out for yourself, which is the ultimate goal of everything, just to become a more experienced user yourself, right? So, uh, I started going on there, got into distro hopping, I hopped between a couple of really shitty distros. I think one of them was like deep in OS or something, which like has, like no one should use. Uh, like it, all these, all these are Debian based, by the way. Uh, so it doesn't really matter that I distro hop to them anyways. It's just because I thought it looked cool or something, so I distro hop to it. And I was like constantly reinstalling my system because I didn't... Oh, shoot. I didn't know that you can have a separate home partition. So when you reinstall the distro, you can just reinstall just the operating system. And then keep your home partition. So like I kept deleting files and backing up files and deleting them again and everything. And that was like really stupid. And this was during the time when I was getting really into torrenting anime. So, like, what ended up happening is that I would constantly have to torrent a bunch of shit every time I reinstall my operating system, uh, which was not fun. And I'm sure my ISP did not appreciate that. I, I probably, like, maxed out our bandwidth way too many times. But, um, there's some people coming. I'm going to continue walking. But, uh, pretend like I don't care. So... Uh, like, I'm sure I was being throttled or whatever by the ISP, but, let's see. So, I, I, I was distro hopping or whatever, and eventually, like everybody else, you're going to want to try Arch. You're going to see what's what's up with Arch. Because that's, that's the whole thing, uh, I think this is the way I'm going. Uh, so I was like 15 or 16, and I was like, it's a good time. I'm going to try installing Arch Linux. Uh, failed. Failed at it. And I continued to fail at it. I would try it every once in a while. But I never got it to work. Until like... Just a couple months ago. But um... It, 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 here's, here's a really stupid reason why it wasn't working. It, it had to do with my Grub2 configuration. That I never set... I never properly set my uh... Or I didn't properly... It's something with the bootloader I never properly did because I was retarded. But uh, I eventually got it to work in 2020 because I was bored one day. Uh, but mainly I just wasn't able to install it because I was stupid. But um, I, I would distro hop a lot. And I think I finally settled on Linux Mint for a while. Uh, I remember that specifically because I, I, I enjoyed using Cinnamon. Uh, I'm going to stay here, and hopefully the people over there don't come. So I'll keep an eye on it. Otherwise, I'll just keep walking. I'll keep talking, dude. Uh, t spreading the good word of uh, free software. But, um, let's see. I'm not going to go that way. There's too many bugs and shit already. 
as it is. As you can see, the river's kind of overflowing. But, um, uh, let's see, where was I? Using Arch, never really got... I actually did install Arch one time, but for some reason it was really slow on my computer. I, I think, I know I did something wrong. I probably misconfigured something and it didn't work correctly. It's always your fault, uh, usually. But, um, but that was also, it might have been just because I was using GNOME 3. And GNOME is like the most bloated desktop environment ever. It's kind of comfy, but it's really bloated. Uh, that, that was the Arch experience, but then I just switched to Linux Mint. And then eventually, um, I switched to Ubuntu. I switched back to Ubuntu Mate. I think that's how you say it. It's Mate or Mate. Um, and that's the, the OS I've stuck on for the longest time. Yeah, I know Ubuntu, uh, the whole canonical thing. Um, but... Uh, I, I think, I mean, it's still better than using Windows, arguably. But that's the uh, the OS I've stuck on for a while. Uh, for like the longest time, and then eventually I just switched to... Uh, I switched to Debian. Because most stability. And uh, I, I've been on that ever since. So I've just been using Debian-based distros for the longest time. Um, and my, my desktop environment of choice is um, Mate. I've still, I've still continued with that one. Uh, I don't know what it is about that. I just find it kind of comfy. Um, it's like it's like a mixture of cinnamon, but also it has a. I just dropped my headphone wire. It's kind of like cinnamon, but it has a couple t couple interesting things you can do with it. Um, it's not that bad. Uh, obviously, there's there's other like window managers like you can use like i3 and whatever. Uh, I've I've used i3 a little bit. Um, I, I got like I, I know like all the key binds and everything, but I, I still enjoy having the desktop environment. I, I don't give a shit about bloat. Uh, you people, the people who complain about bloat have shit computers. Uh, so as long as you're not using like a terribly uh, unoptimized um, desktop environment, like in not a shitty uh, distro, I think you'll be fine. Uh, unless you're r literally running on a netbook. But, I, I mean, that's kind of my Linux uh, uh, journey. So, Windows 11, bringing it all back, right? This has gone on way too long, I think, and this is a dumb ramble. But, Windows 11, uh, terrifying. I'm using Windows 10 currently on my main desktop, uh, which I, I know is, like, not, not, the, not the most um, smart decision I've ever made in my life. Oh, there's a little chipmunk guy over there. But... Um, you know, it's it's kind of like a privacy concern, and I've, uh, I've been sort of indifferent about this because, um, in like the way I see it, is that privacy is a slippery slope, and uh, eventually you'll reach the conclusion that, like, uh, the, the the basically the thing you have to do is just not go online. Um, so like you will eventually start cutting out this and that. It'll start with your search engine, and then your browser, and then uh, this and that, and. Uh, your operating system and then eventually you'll realize that like hey i just if the way to be secure is just not to go online in the first place um uh, so that's kind of how i feel so i've been sort of indifferent about it but uh generally speaking it's something that uh, i do advocate for and i do appreciate because uh, i am I, I have been using linux ever since at least on my laptop my laptop has been my main uh computer for the longest time uh but um that that's that that's uh that, that's the whole that's kind of like my my stance on it i know i'm part of the problem but uh i think i think finally it's the the straw that broke the camel's back so to speak that's that's coming up here and um let me, let me hide under here up here actually this is comfy there's gonna be bugs bugs are just gonna fall on my hair uh let's see so Windows 11, it's like the new operating system. Uh, it looks like garbage. It's probably gonna be unoptimized as heck. Uh, and it's it's just like this whole new design trend that all these uh, companies are doing these days, like make me wanna vomit because of how terrible they look. Like they got all this glass and blurry effects and stuff. I'm so glad like Windows 10 still had that you could have a solid color and stuff. But I know, I guarantee you, Knowing Microsoft, they're going to take even more things away in terms of customizability. Uh, we'll be lucky, like, there is a start menu, but is it really a start menu? 
Uh, it's not going to be like the good old days of Windows XP and Windows 7 or the days of Classic Shell or whatever. Uh, like, the, the, the whole thing, like Windows 10, like the biggest feature is that it had a start menu uh, and it wasn't shit. Like, can you trust Microsoft with anything? Uh, no, and then like that's not even to talk about the whole, uh, the whole privacy concern, uh, which I know is only going to get worse. It's just exponentially getting worse. And this is going to be their opportunity to shoehorn in more, uh, more spyware and crap. Uh, also, like, d dude, Audacity is spyware now. What the hell? Um, so we're going to have to, luckily, luck I mean, luckily it's open source, so people caught that. But, like, it, like all this shit, dude, all this shit that's happening, it's just making me even more and more paranoid. In, like, these past couple of days, I've just been reading articles uh, about, like, uh, privacy stuff and free and open source software, uh, the whole, that whole movement, uh, which is something I've been aware of for the longest time, but then like re refreshing myself of why, uh, like I even started preferring, um, using alternate search engines and, um, using Linux in the first place and using only free and open source software, uh, like why I even had that stance in the first place. So I'm like reaffirming why I had these stances and I'm, I'm finally, finally, uh, I'm just going to Eventually, I'm one of these one of these days. I'm gonna fully pick, finally pick a distro for my desktop, something pretty stable, uh, and then just like fully commit to it. I'm probably honestly just gonna do Debian, and then on my laptop I'll do something a little bit crazier. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll go with like an Arch-based distro or something. Have fun. I'll go crazy with that. Um, but uh, I, I guess the reason I haven't fully committed to it on my desktop is because like the the common cliche that because um, games. But like I don't even play that many games these day, this day, these days anymore. Uh, most of the shit I do is just watch anime. You can watch that on MPV. Uh, a lot of the things are more convenient because you can just do shit out of the terminal really easily. Um, whereas the Windows command line is like it, it's just garbage. It doesn't do anything. Uh, and then um, like like a lot of the other things like file management and shit. Um, all my torrent clients are my or like my torrent client I should say is there so I could just easily cop that, copy that over um, Probably just end up dual booting and then just like keeping Windows 10 around for it my my Adobe applications and whatnot in some games uh, So I'll just end up dual booting and just using Debian the entire time Because uh, all my all my extra files like my anime I have that on a separate drive and my movies and games and shit is on another drive so my SSD only has like my pictures and stuff uh, and some random local files that I have, like some random audio files or uh, random notes and whatever. And those could be accessed even if you're um, dual booting, you just partition your disk the correct way. Uh, but I guess like the reason I haven't fully committed to using Linux on my desktop is because uh, like I've spooked myself. The fucking mosquitoes are everywhere, I'm going to have to get out of here soon. Because I've spooked myself. Uh, of all the years of distro hopping and just like losing everything or just breaking my system but the thing is most problems you have with your uh, with your computer are fixable uh if it, and as long as you don't like mess around a lot of the things that i would break is because i would mess around a lot because i used to be really into ricing which is like um doing like customizing um your desktop and your desktop environment or your window manager or whatever to be uh, really aesthetically appealing depending on whatever that is and you, you mess around with a lot of configuration files when you do that and sometimes you might inevitably break something um, or when you distro hop a lot you might do so, you might fuck something up in your partition uh, of your hard drive uh, and then suddenly like you just pull you, you're pulled up to the grub 2 loader and you're like oh crap what did I do uh, something like that but most of the time you're not going to have something catastrophic as long as you don't like go messing around with things because like I said I've been doing perfectly fine with um with like Debian on my laptop currently that uh I've just been I've been running that well that and like I was previously using Ubuntu Mate and then jumped to a Debian with the Mate desktop environment and I've been using that on that computer I could I could look back but I know I've been using it since at least at least 2017 uh and like ever since I haven't even reinstalled the op uh, reinstalled anything it's just been there and it just works um, and like I've had no problems with it so there's really no reason to change so I think that's what I'm gonna do 
uh, with my desktop. Um, just like if I want to go into Windows, just play my games. Um, but other other than that, like I could just uh, hang out in uh, in the comfy Debian experience. Uh, it's it's uh, it's it's stable, but it's it's outdated. But um, I'll take the stability over uh, like fucking around. I've already, I've already had had fun with that. And that's also what laptops are for. That's what my ThinkPad is for. I kind of want to fuck with uh, with Gentoo a bit because I've been looking at Gentoo and it seems like it seems really dumb, uh, but also like it could be has the potential to be super comfy. Uh, just compiling your own software uh, and like I I, I kind of want to mess with that. And then since I have a ThinkPad, uh, the X220, it's probably well documented the kind of uh, things that happen with it. Um, like in terms of like the hardware compatibility and whatever, and if you have issues with it, that's the good thing about ThinkPads. Um, I also kind of want to get a new ThinkPad. I want to get a, a T420 uh, because it has a DVD drive, and whereas uh, the X220 does not. So I have two laptops currently: the X220 right now, and then my old HP laptop. The old HP laptop uh, is currently running. Um, Ubuntu Mate still. My ThinkPad is running Debian 10, I believe. Yeah, that's the most recent one. I think it's the most recent one. But uh, but that, that's kind of what that is. And then I have my desktop. I also have another really old desktop that I think I'm going to make into a, like some sort of Debian server or something. Like a media server, but I haven't decided. Uh, but that, that's like really ancient. That's like the family computer from like 10 years ago. Um, which also has another flavor of Linux. I think it's like Lubuntu or like the Ubuntu Lite or something. I think there's an animal over there or something. Now I'm getting, uh, I, I don't know. I'm going to start heading out because there was a lot of uh, movement over there. Yeah, there's a lot of movement over there. Might be a person. I don't know. Uh, I'll just I'll just hang out over here and hope it isn't like a the animal otherwise I'll have to fight it on on video but anyways I was talking about the whole uh, tinfoil hat thing in terms of um, privacy that's a lot of movement I'm getting slightly concerned now but anyways the whole point getting concerned with privacy actually gonna take the plunge um, fuck Microsoft fuck Windows uh, we're doing this for real boys uh, we're doing this for real um, so that's that's the whole thing and eventually my end game my end game is to not use the internet at all. I'm gonna go that crazy because, like the like with like the past month or something, uh, I went back to watching Luke Smith. I used to watch Luke Smith a lot back when I was more into like when I was get, first getting into Linux and I thought it was the coolest shit ever. Still is, but I was like way more excited about it back then because it was brand new to me. But um, um, I guess like I, I was into that and. I was watching him back in like 2017, 2018-ish, uh, bef like before like a lot of the recent stuff. So like there was like a huge gap in my viewing of him, and now like I just randomly go back to his channel, and I see like Luke Smith in the woods filming a vlog or something, and I'm like, that's kind of cool. That's kind of based. Uh, so like I think that's Endgame right there to just like fuck off into the country, uh, and just like do your own shit over there. Um, that's, that's like, that's probably like my, my end game, uh, to just live off grid because I don't stream anime. Oh crap, dude. I think, I think that's what it was. There was a deer. That's what it was. Oh, wow. That's, that's kind of cool. It just swam across. I didn't even see that. That's emergent gameplay right there, guys. That's emergent gameplay. That's what I've been talking about. But anyways, um... The whole point is to get off grid because a lot of the things I do aren't even online to begin with. Um, like I do do the, some things online, but most of that stuff is uh, like it's mostly YouTube, right? I don't really like use social media or use other social apps. I don't even I don't really browse, um, or actually I just straight up don't really use image boards anymore. I kind of use Tono Chan kind of, but I never consistently check up on that because it's a slow site. Uh, sometimes check in on JP, but it's mostly to see if there's a Denpa thread or like a Fumo thread up. And I only really check Fumo threads for the cute pictures and the uh, to see if there's a new sale coming up. And um, 
So I don't really use that stuff anymore. It's very minimal. I could totally just like fuck off the internet. The thing that would be hard is fucking is like getting off YouTube, but you could still use YouTube DL and you could save all your subscriptions as an RS, RSS feed if I remember correctly. Um, otherwise you can, you, I mean, there's other ways to do that stuff, but I remember that you can do that because at a certain point I just had an RSS app on my phone that just had all my subscriptions from YouTube or like the ones I cared about and then like, uh, getting other information, um, like from other feeds, like there was like a blog I was following and then, um, you could also get like anime news network stuff if they still support RSS. Uh, but, um, but yeah. So basically my end game is to just get off the internet uh, at some point just to be a total total uh, tinfoil hat kind of person. Get really paranoid because I'm, I'm already paranoid about some of these things in terms of, oh there's a deer. I don't know what to do. I, I'm not an outdoor guy. I'm going to walk away because I don't want to walk towards it because I don't think they attack you. Now he's walking towards me. I'm going to walk away. I'm not sure what to do in this situation because now I'm trapped over here. I think he's watching me. I kind of need to go, bro, but uh, you're kind of in my way. I don't know. Like, will they attack you? I'm just going to stand here. I don't think they will. Actually, there might be another way to get out over there. But I don't want to, I don't want to like, I don't want to mess with him because he's, or her actually, it might be, oh there's a beaver guy there. There's too much nature dude, I'm not a, I'm not a nature boy. Yeah, she's just walking. Oh, she was trying to get by, okay. Okay. Because I think you can theoretically get out over here. I'm going to walk over here just to see, I might emerge somewhere where uh, there's more people and stuff. So it's going to be kind of awkward. But I don't want to mess with these, like, these guys. Because I'm not trying to, um, ruin their day or anything. I don't like to, I don't like to, people to mess with me, so I don't like to mess with them. Especially when I walk into their home. So I'm just going to walk through here and see where I come out. We're going serious off-roading. I put my mask on because I don't want to swallow any bugs. Luckily, dude, so lucky I brought my pants. Um, let's see, we're just going to walk through here. I'm sure someone will tell me if I walk through some poison ivy. And there's, of course, there's a little kid's baseball game happening right there. So I'm just going to, you know, like emerge from the woods. Just like, and, and play it off. Play it off. And then I'm going to... We walk back through them. Dude, there's a path that's randomly right here. Dude, the most suspicious person. Some long hair weirdo. Wearing... Wearing a, a freaking... Um, a Day to Remember t-shirt because I used, I used to listen to them. Just wearing, just wearing a Day to Remember t-shirt just emerges from the woods talking to his phone not recording the little kids game just like you know we're just walking past I think there's people over there because I hear more voices so I'm just gonna get the fuck out ah uh, shoot yeah assert your dominance right because at some point you're going to have to stop giving a shit about this. I think they're over there. We'll find out. But yeah, that's basically what I've been thinking about. The whole uh, free software shit. Using, uh, using Linux. Um, this is probably a really boring vlog, by the way. Because uh, I was just rambling about things that I don't really know too much about. I'm not like the hugest, hugest, can't speak. I'm not like the biggest, uh, uh, you know, like, 
a FOSS guy, but advocating against proprietary software mostly. But you know, the real reason why people like me exist, why a lot of neats use Linux, here's the real secret, because there's a certain letter in FOSS, F-O-S-S, free open source software. The biggest important letter is not that it's open source, but that it's free. Because then you don't have to pay for it. Why would you pay for something if you can get an alternative for free? They might be shittier, but if you're a neat, a hikikomori, or you just don't want to pay Microsoft or Adobe or whatever, get the free alternative. Waste a little bit of time learning how to do it, and then eventually you'll learn how it works, and then you won't ever go back. So I've just been paranoid as fuck lately about these things. Um, I'm always living in a constant state of paranoia, by the way. Uh, be it, like, other people. Be it the, my internet usage. And actually, I'm not really too paranoid about my internet usage. I do whatever the hell I want. Because I have the password to my router and everything. Um, and my parents never check, like, browsing history or whatever. They're not that, uh, that crazy about that. <laughs>